evening, everyone. It's great to have you with us again tonight as we live stream for you our prayer meeting from Medhead Christian Fellowship. Um, we do hope you'll enjoy worshipping with us and we'll get, take part in the prayers. There's an opportunity for you to comment in the comment boxes as we go along. And if there's anyone you want us to pray for, any situations you want us to pray about, please, please write them for us in the comments and we'll look at those later. Uh, the words of the songs that we sing and the reading of scripture will appear on the screen. So you can just sit back, relax, pray and enjoy the presence of God we trust. We're going to start with a reading and Nick's going to do that for us tonight. Thanks, Nick. Haggai chapter 1, a call to build the house of the Lord. In the second year of King Darius, on the first day of the sixth month, the word of the Lord came through the prophet Haggai to Zerubbabel, son of Shealtiel, governor of Judah, and to Joshua, son of Jozadak, the high priest. This is what the Lord Almighty says. These people say, the time has not yet come to rebuild the Lord's house. Then the word of the Lord came through the prophet Haggai. Is it a time for you yourselves to be living in your panelled houses while this house remains a ruin? Now this is what the Lord God Almighty says. Give careful thought to your ways. You have planted much but harvested little. You eat but never have enough. You drink but never have your fill. You put on clothes but are not warm. You earn wages only to put them in a purse with holes in it. This is what the Lord Almighty says. Give careful thought to your ways. Go up into the mountains and bring down timber and build my house so that I may take pleasure in it and be honoured, says the Lord. You expected much, but see, it turned out to be little. What you brought home, I blew away. Why, declares the Lord Almighty, because of my house, which remains a ruin, while each of you is busy with your own house. Therefore, because of you, the heavens have withheld their dew and the earth its crops. I called for a drought on the fields and the mountains, on the grain, the new wine, the olive oil, and everything else the ground produces, on people and livestock and on all the labor of your hands. Then Zerubbabel, son of Shealtiel, Joshua, son of Josedach, the high priest, and the whole remnant of the people obeyed the voice of the Lord their God and the message of the prophet Haggai, because the Lord their God had sent him and the people feared the Lord. Then Haggai, the Lord's messenger, gave this message of the Lord to the people. I am with you, declares the Lord. So the Lord stirred up the spirit of Zerubbabel, son of Shealtiel, governor of Judah, and the spirit of Joshua, son of Josedach, the high priest, and the spirit of the whole remnant of the people. They came and began to work on the house of the Lord Almighty, their God, on the 24th day of the sixth month.
The first chapter of Haggai speaks of a prophecy that came to the people of God approximately 500 years before the birth of Christ. And one advantage I find of reading these ancient books is the perspective it gives us on the span of human history and how what seems like monumental challenges to us are just bumps in the road of the timeline of generations of experience. However, it also shows that there's nothing new under the sun at all and that despite thousands of years of history and some would say development, our outlook and our weaknesses are pretty much the same as they've always been. The prophecy was that these people say the time has not yet come to rebuild the Lord's house. But the Lord said, is it a time for you yourselves to be living in panelled houses while my house remains a ruin? Give careful thought to your ways. You've planted much, but harvested little. You eat, but you never have enough. You drink, but never have you fill. You put on clothes that are not warm. You earn wages only to put them in a purse with holes in it. These people were frustrated. They were aware of their limitations. They were vulnerable. They didn't know how to address their problems or find the fulfillment and the peace they craved. And the word of the Lord was coming to them and saying, actually, you've got your focus all wrong. You're looking in the wrong direction. The thing that you thought would distract you from that which is important is actually the very thing you need to be focused on. 2020 has certainly been a year to shake our certainties and cause us to question our values and our priorities. The fear and the apprehension that have caused our world to look in on itself, to think of what all this can mean for my health, my well-being, my future, has really taken our focus and it's away from where it should be. It's been a year robbed of joy, of expectation and hope. There's been nothing to make us feel that we know which way to turn. And as the people of God, we need to recognize that these times of shaking, they, ensure, they, they need to ensure that we end up on a firmer footing rather than giving way to uncertainty and apprehension. We need to come out of this year on a firmer, more faith-filled footing than we entered it. So God's word to the people in verse 7 to 11, when he said, give careful thought to your ways, go up into the mountains and bring down timber and build my house so that I may take pleasure in it. You're saying, reset your priorities, reset your vision, reset your values. Build accordingly. And God's word to us is the same, I believe. Let's not put our hope and our expectation in just getting back to normal but in the kingdom of God, both in the now and in the not yet. Let's leave this pandemic with a renewed vigor and a renewed faith and a renewed vision that isn't just a relief that we can go back to the way things were because I believe that God has wanted to shake us away from some of those things. 2020 should be a landmark year in the history of the people of God, a year to wake up and even to repent of allowing the cares of our own lives to overtake all that God has called us to, to seek first his kingdom without hesitation or qualification, to live, as Billy Graham put it, with eternity's values in view. What mattered was not what had happened in the hearts of the people, what had sort of the, the, the flattening of their spirit, but their response when they were challenged. And verse 12 to 15 tells us that they actually listened and they responded and the Lord came to them and spoke to them again, having warned them, having rebuked them. Then when he saw the response of their hearts, he said, I am with you. And so the Lord stirred up the spirit of Zerubbabel, he stirred up the spirit of Joshua, and he stirred up the spirit of the remnant of all the people to do all that he had given them to do. And so as we pray tonight and as we pray, as we continue on this journey out of this crisis, this year like no other, let's pray not just that there would be an answer to a disease, not just that things might return to normal, but that there would be a revival spirit in the church and that we would enter 2021 with our hearts and our minds fixed firmly on what God wants of us, not just what we want for ourselves. And if we will listen to the challenge that God is speaking through this storm, then I believe just as he did for these people, he will stir our spirits and he will enable us to take on 2021 and the years ahead with all the vigor 
and all the faith and all the vision and all the expectation that can come out of the dark times. God truly does work all things together for the good of those who love him. And it's our prayer that he might revive his church, even through this crisis. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. So, you know, we're going to focus on him, aren't we? The author and the finisher of our faith, the chief uh, foundation and cornerstone that we build upon, the rock, Christ Jesus. Everything flows from him. Everything is for him. It's all about him. And, uh, and as we pray now, I just want to encourage you, as I say, to, to take part in these prayers, not just to watch or listen, but actually pray yourself. We'll be giving opportunity for you to, to be stirred and inspired yourself. Lord, pray through me tonight. Mm. So Nick's going to just open up in prayer, and the different ones of us are going to pray now as we lead us on for the rest of the service. Thanks, yes. Nick. Amen. Let's pray, shall we? Mm. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we thank you for your word to us, which is timeless, that speaks through the generations. We thank you for the encouragement of how you spoke to the people through Haggai. And Lord God, we do pray for ourselves. We pray for your church. We pray for your people across this land and across the world, that you would stir up our spirit with a revival spirit, God, that you would stir up a spirit with a bold, fearless, and courageous spirit, that when your people were threatened in the book of Acts, when they were... Um, when they were warned, when they were, when they were pushed to one side, they simply prayed, Lord, give us now boldness to speak. Give us now boldness to act. And I pray for your church that you would make us bold and strong and courageous and people who value above all things the value of the kingdom of God, that we would be followers of Jesus, that we would go after him with our whole hearts, not just adopting his name or his identity, but we would truly go after him and know what it is to, to be shaped and changed and challenged and envisioned by that life journey. Just pray now that you would stir up your church. We pray for revival in our communities. We pray for revival in our towns. But most of all, we pray for revival in your church because that is where it will come from. Bring fire into our hearts, we pray, Lord God, that we would... That, that all these things that have crowded in on our minds, that have, that have, that have taken up our, our, our perspective and our focus, that they would, they would fall away and that we would emerge, Lord God, with strength and power and renewed vision for all that you have for us. Thank you that uh, your church is invincible and I thank you for all that you're doing in her, in Jesus' name. We pray for this Advent season as we come towards Christmas. And every year we say, oh, you know, where is the meaning of, of Christmas? Where is it all gone? And yet, Father, again, just as we pray for revival in our hearts, may we prepare our hearts for the coming of Jesus. Lord God, may we prepare a way for him. Lord God, would you take the preeminence this season? Would you take the center stage? Not that we have to bring you in and put you there and remind each other to look at you, but you would, you would impose yourself upon our hearts this season, that you would, you would be be seen more clearly than ever before. And Lord God, all of it would contribute to, our, to, to the building and the strengthening of our faith as you prepare us for all that is ahead of us. We thank you for the announcement of the angels. Peace and joy and goodwill to all the earth. A Saviour is born. Thank you for the coming of the Saviour. Thank you for his presence in our lives. And thank you for all that you are doing in us and through us. In Jesus' name, amen. Thanks for a little while. Just as we start our time of prayer, thanking God for, you know, what he has given us and what he has done in our lives. It's good to give thanks, to enter into his presence with thanksgiving in our hearts. <laughs> We're thankful, Lord. We're thankful. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you that you're with us now. Thank you that you're here in our homes. Thank you that you're with us as we pray. Thank you, Lord, that you're there for us. And if you are for us, who can be against us? So, Lord, we do bring at the start. We think about Christmas being a place where, you know, we, we had to prepare room for you, a room for you, space for you. Lord, I want to pray that we would create space in our lives for others at Christmas. And particularly in our prayers now, we want to pray for our families. 
we think of grandparents, maybe great-grandparents. We think of children. We think of grandchildren. We think of those particularly who need you at this time, those who are shielding, those who are struggling with illness, struggling with uh, education perhaps, struggling with lack of jobs, struggling with their mental health or with some sort of disability. Lord, we bring all our family to you and we name them before you now in Jesus' name. And we pray, God, your blessing and your protection and for your hope to grow in their lives also at this time. We want to pray particularly for all those who may have wandered away from the faith in our families. And we once again remember them before you now and say, Lord, in your mercy and grace, bring them to their senses. Call them back to you, we pray in Jesus' name. We pray for those we know who are struggling in their marriages, struggling in their family relationships, perhaps brothers and sisters who've fallen out, maybe, um, maybe people who've fallen out with your parents. But these things get in the way, don't they, of our peace and our joy. Lord, we pray for reconciliation and we pray for peace in families tonight in Jesus' name. And Lord, you know, this is a time of great pressure upon the family. Uh, I believe that separations and divorces are, are rising on the rise during this COVID um, pandemic. So Lord, we want to pray for the sanctity of family life. And pray, Lord, that you would enable people to live together in peace and to live together in love. And Lord, that you would help us in our marriages and in our relationships, both to honor you and to honor one another. In Jesus' name. We want to pray for those in our families, perhaps who are struggling um, with addictions. And in Jesus' name, we pray for your deliverance. Whether this is addiction to um, any sort of drug, Father, in Jesus' name, please be with them. Particularly, we want to pray for those who are str struggling with a gambling habit tonight. Believe that God would have us pray for people with, uh, struggling with a gambling habit tonight. Perhaps you know somebody who is. Lord, we pray in Jesus' name that you would enable them to find you and discover deliverance in Jesus' name. And particularly, Lord, at this time of the pressure financially upon people, we pray for those who've lost jobs and have lost hope during this pandemic. Lord, we pray that you would, for a recovery of the economy in our country, and particularly in our localities where we live, and pray for jobs for those who need them. And we pray, Father, for those who are struggling with debt, Father, that you would enable them to uh, be honest and open about this and find a way out in Jesus' name. And finally, Lord, one of those great issues, as I listen to the radio on the morning and it talks about the symptoms of the pandemic, and we all know about the coughs and all the rest of it, Lord, but for me, the big symptoms we're facing are mental health issues, um, loss of jobs and loss of life for so many people. Lord, just it's painful. It's painful for people. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Deliver us from this evil, we pray. In Jesus' name, we pray the peace of God to keep the hearts and minds of those who are str struggling with anxiety and depression tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Father, this evening we make that proclamation. You're the God of this city you're the God of this nation. You're the God of this people. That is who you are. And we make that declaration and we make it with boldness and with faith because that is who you are. And you are concerned about every single person and every single challenge and every single struggle. And I thank you that you teach us that even the hairs on our head, you know. There's nothing that is hidden from you. I just want to encourage you this evening as we begin to pray for our community. My community will look very different to yours. Um, church community will look different. But just, just go up and down your street and your neighbors. You might know them by name, you might not. But just go from door to door and just, if you don't know what else to pray, pray God's blessing on each family, on each child, on each couple. Just go from door to door. Father, we lift our neighborhood up to you this evening and you know what goes on behind closed doors. 
we only see what people allow us to see. But Father, I thank you this evening that you know everything. And I pray that you would go from family to family, Father, and that you would bring healing where there is sadness and where there's grief, where there's despair, where there's fear. One of the hallmarks of this whole situation has been fear. We pray, I thank you that your perfect love casts out fear. Father, I pray that you would visit the homes of our neighbors. And I pray you'd challenge us. What is it that we need to do to demonstrate love, to show love, to be the hands and feet of Jesus? We pray this evening for the schools in our area, for our secondary schools, and maybe you want to name them this evening, for our primary schools, for our teachers. It's the big struggle for them as they adapt to this kind of new, confused way of teaching. Pray your blessing upon them. Pray good things and favor over their lives. As Jonathan's mentioned already, we look around and we see that businesses are, are boarded up and many will wonder whether their area will ever have business shops, corner shops. And we just pray, Father, for prosperity in our nation. We particularly, we pray for small businesses that have suffered, particularly over this very difficult time. We pray for job opportunities. And maybe you want a job this evening. Write it down, what it is that you're looking for. We'll pray for you that God would give you a job that is right for you. We thank you, Father, that you're the God who answers prayer. And we pray for those amongst us, that those that we know that need a new job. Father, with everything that's going on, we pray for safety on our streets. We pray particularly for our elderly. We pray in these winter months as things get dark and as things get cold, that, Father, you would put your protection over our land. We're praying for the UK this evening, but wherever you are, pray for that nation. We pray against scams that prey on the vulnerable. We ask, Lord God, that you would intervene and intercept. We pray for our church family this evening. I'm sure... Your church is going through a lot of things as, as ours is here at MCF. We need prayer. We pray for your church family this evening. We pray for the churches in our area. We pray for unity in your body. Father, your blessing would be upon your church. Help us to be responsive to your word and to understand the signs of the times that we live in. We pray for leaders who are struggling this evening. Maybe the whole different way of doing things and the questions that have had to be asked, maybe struggling with their own feeling of where do they fit in this new way of looking at things. We pray for godly confidence and boldness and certainty that only comes from an infilling of the Holy Spirit. We pray for those amongst us that have got real personal needs, financial needs, health needs, relationship needs. Father, we lift those situations up to you this evening. And again, we ask that you write yours down and we'll pray. We remember those that work overseas and the crisis may not look quite like this, but nevertheless, it's still a world that is in crisis in one way or another. We pray, we pray at MCF for our mission stations overseas. We think of Chrissy in the Philippines. We thank you for what you've done for her, Father, but we pray you continue to provide. You've been a God of miraculous provision. Continue, Father, we pray, to just bowl them over with how good you are at keeping up to date with those bills. We pray for India and our partners there and the work of CLC. Particularly, we think of the Bible Project in Belarus and in Russia. Father, we pray for Zambia this evening. We think of those in Mufalira and we think of those in Sachibondo. We pray, Father, for an infilling and an empowering of your Holy Spirit, that wherever the church is, they would be the body, the hands and the feet of Jesus. Bless your church, we pray, in Jesus' name. Amen. Haggai told us to get our priorities right, to put God first and and there was that stirring of the people that was brought about by the Spirit of God. Lord, we want to put you first in our lives. Uh, just some simple verses that we'll know as an old chorus. Like you may not even have to look at the words, but we're going to sing, Seek ye first the kingdom of God. Seek ye first the kingdom of God.
God is asking us to ask. He's asking us to see. He's asking us to keep knocking on it on the door. We want some answers, Lord. Lord, we're looking for your kingdom to come and your will to be done. Here in our lives, here in our churches, here in our communities, here in our city, here in this world. Lord, may your kingdom come. May your will be done. Lord, come in power, we pray. Spare us, Lord. for the health of our nation now. Do you know, we are a sick nation in so many ways. We're sick mentally, emotionally. We're sick physically. We're sick with sin. We need the touch of the healer. We need Jesus to come and meet us in our sickness. And you know, the great thing about the Lord Jesus Christ is he touched the outcast. He touched lepers who nobody was supposed to touch. He was willing to associate himself with unclean people. And Lord, the Lord wants to touch the unclean parts in our society and the unclean parts in our lives. So let's pray for health. Lord, we do want to pray for our NHS tonight, Lord, which is under increasing pressure because of staff off, because of flu, because of the COVID, and because of all the other issues that are logged up and backed up through this pandemic. Father, we want to pray for doctors and nurses, paramedics, for people who work in hospitals. Um, you, you, if you know names now, please mention them before the Lord. Ask for God's protection upon them, for health for them, for health for their families, for blessing upon them in their work. And pray particularly for the local ho- hospitals and doctor surgeries around you. Um, Lord, we want to pray your blessing upon those who work in these places and pray that they will be places of healing. Lord, we don't want to pray that they would be places of death, but they would be places of healing in the name of Jesus. We pray that for our care homes too. We thank you that visits are now beginning to people who are in care homes. Lord, we thank you that that is healthy and good. And Lord, we want to pray for health for those who both work in care homes and those who live in care homes, Lord. We pray your health upon them in Jesus' name. We pray for those who are waiting treatment. And it's been such a struggle as they've waited and waited and waited. And perhaps some of their treatment has been delayed through this uh, pandemic. Father, we want to pray for a release of healing for them tonight in Jesus' name. And again, if you know care homes, if you know people working in them, if you know people who are awaiting treatment, uh, I want to pray for Jean particularly tonight. Lord, in Jesus' name, we want to pray for healing. And we want to pray, Father, for strength for Jean at this time in the precious name of Jesus. I want to pray too, Lord, because it becomes more and more difficult for those in our society to access GPs and health care with having to back up weight on phones and all the rest of it. Lord, it's difficult for some people who are not used to using technology to get to, to health centers and things and haven't got the transport. Lord, in Jesus' name, we pray for those struggling to access help tonight. And perhaps you know friends or neighborhoods, people in your society. Look at that dear lady in Burnley who talked about all the, all the health care she had missed over the last six months. God, in, we pray in your mercy and grace, we want to pray that this would be resolved in Jesus' name. And we do want to give thanks, Lord. I know it's not universally acceptable, but I want to thank you that for some there is hope with this vaccine. And we do want to pray that whatever, you know, whatever people's feelings about it, Lord, I want to pray for its success. I want to pray that it would be rolled out successfully too. And that you would, the logistics of this would go well in our society. And Father, finally, uh, you know, we know we've got these five days coming up at Christmas. But we want to pray, Father, 
you know, because uh, the way our government and SAGE work, you know, the R rate is so important. We do want to pray that this, this uh, R rate would decrease rapidly over the next two or three weeks in our country. It's a big prayer, but we pray it in Jesus' name. Lord, I want to pray for health for our nation in Jesus' name. And we pray for a release for lockdown. A release from this situation we find ourselves in where people feel locked down in Jesus' name. We do pray, therefore, for our government, for their advisors, for SAGE, and for all involved in making decisions on our behalf. Lord, we know they're doing their best. We sincerely believe in, 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 uh, that they want to do the best for our nation, but we want to pray for wisdom, for humility, for integrity, and for guidance for each one of them in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We're going to pray for our world as well, our wider world. There's so many issues facing the world, and we're just going to pray um, for God's mercy and grace to cover the face of the earth. Father, we thank you that you are a God who holds the world in the palm of your hand, that you see everything, you understand everything. And from our point of view, things are so overwhelming, but from your point of view, you see everything perfectly. And so we pray for the nations of the world. And there'll be, as we pray together, there'll be nations that are on your own heart. And begin to pray for them. Pray for the people that you know in those nations. Begin to put them up on the screen, maybe, so that we can share in them and, uh, and, and, and add our prayers and our amens to, to all that is going on. But we pray for the, for the nations of the world. We pray for, for Europe and its particular struggle with this pandemic. Not just the medical struggle, but the, the ethical, the, the, the political struggle that it seems to be having. Lord God, there are many parts of the world that have suffered in so many ways over so many years with so many things, and this is nothing new. But we pray for Europe that in, in her particular struggle, Lord God, that you would come through it all and you would be seen. Father God, we pray for the emergence of a powerful, radical, revolutionary church that holds on tight to Jesus. We pray for Europe in, in so many ways, spiritual dark corner of the world. We pray for revival. We pray for your light to shine. We're so often used to praying for the far reaches of the world, but that which we consider home, we pray for it. We pray for your mercy. We pray for, uh, for your mercy upon the nations of that continent, Lord God. We pray for, for Africa this evening and all the countries that make up that vast, vast continent and all the people. We thank you for the movement of your spirit over the face of that, of that continent over so many years. And we just pray now. God again, that your light would shine. We pray for leadership. We pray for integrity. We pray for courage. We thank you, Father, that nation upon nation, there are people rising up to take a stand for that which is right and that which is good, and yet they are suffering in so many ways. Continue to give them boldness. Continue to give them strength, that their righteousness would shine like the dawn, and that, uh, that darkness will not ultimately overwhelm. Father, we pray for the United States. We pray for all that is, that is going on there and all the, the, that, that spirit of division, that conflict that, that seems to be not just there but the world over. We pray for the unity that comes through the, you know, you, you came to, do, to do, destroy the dividing wall of hostility and to unite people in your kingdom. And as we've prayed throughout this evening, the thread through it all has been for the revival of your church. I pray, God, that that would be manifest. We're praying for a vaccine, that it would have a, that would have a, have a, a, a tangible, ongoing effect in the life of a community. But, Father, more than that, we pray for the, for the work of your Spirit through, through every community on the face of this earth, that we would begin to see uh, the, the eradicating of that division, of that hostility, of that anger, of that lawlessness, of that of everything that is going on on the face of the earth, Lord God, and that we would begin to see the impact of the gospel uh, in nation after nation after nation. And so we just pray for that your glory would cover the earth as the waters cover the sea. Amen. 
In a moment, we're going to pray for individuals that we know, last specifically for healing and for help. Um, but you may have noticed that we've got quite a lovely uh, Christmas tree uh, just decorated with lights. Um, it's not fully decorated yet. We want to, over this Christmas season, uh, to decorate that with our prayers and our prayers of thanksgiving and our, uh, is the word supplications to God, our requests. Um, fill it with names of people that we're specifically praying for, situations that we want to see God break through in. Maybe it's family members who, maybe you've lost a loved one and it's family members that you want to pray for and to remember we want to fill that tree with those names and those situations so that every time we look at it, we will remember that God has got these people in the palm of his hand. So what we're asking uh, you to do, uh, if you'd like to take part in that, is to sit, write the names of people, the situations. You can do that on the chat that you've got in front of you, or you can send it through to the church email address, um, erica with a C dot lug at mcfchurch.co.uk and I will make sure that those prayer requests go on that tree beautifully decorated and next week we'll be able to see that grow as time goes by. So as we think about that and we see the light, which I think is a good picture of hope, we can pray for individuals and I think we can pray with thanksgiving. I've got a, a, a gentleman that we've been praying with, a friend, a husband of a friend of mine who was discharged from hospital today. I know that a couple of weeks ago he was very, very sick, but he was discharged today and that's a real answer to prayer. So we can come with thanksgiving um, and glad hearts because we know that our God is a God who answers prayer. So let's remember those specific individuals that you're thinking of this evening. Father, this evening, as a church, we stand and we, we stand on behalf of Ray and Jean and we pray for them specifically this evening. We pray, Holy Spirit, that you would visit that home in such a real way. That the heaviness of your presence would be there in that home the comfort of knowing that they're surrounded by you and loved by you, secure in your arms. We pray for them and for the family this evening. Thank you that you love them and they love you. We lift them up to you this evening very specifically. Holy Spirit, brood in that situation, we pray. Maybe there are other people that you know that are really facing challenges and perhaps don't know where to turn or what to think or where to go. Let's just lift those names up before God. We pray for those with health challenges. Maybe it is COVID related. Maybe it's not COVID related. Maybe somebody today has received a diagnosis that has just rocked their world. God of all grace, we pray. You would visit those situations. Pray for those this evening that are, that are waiting to hear, playing that waiting game, wondering Lift those names up before you this evening, Father. Pray for Janet and for Yomi this evening. We pray for those this evening that are struggling with grief. I pray particularly for Jean. God of all comfort, the one who walks with us in our sorrow, the lifter of our head, our refuge and strength and ever-present help in time of need. God, there are so many needs amongst us, so many needs in our family, so many needs amongst our friends. Our ever-present help in time of need. Yes, Emmanuel, God is with us. God is with us. Thank you, Jesus. Mm. 
talking to you tonight? Mm. Are there priorities that you've got wrong in your life? Mm. Is God stirring your heart to put him first again? Yes. Is he stirring your spirit mm. to put the Christ back into your Christmas? Let every heart prepare him room. I, what is God asking you to keep asking and seeking and knocking on his door about? To keep pushing in prayer for an answer, not to give up. God does not want you. I don't know who I'm speaking to, but there's somebody out there. No, it doesn't want you to give up hope in the situation where you feel you've prayed about it for years, I think. But God is saying, don't give up hope. I am hope. Christ in you, the hope of glory. Keep asking. Keep seeking. Keep knocking. Thank you, Lord. Shall we say the Lord's Prayer together? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We're going to sing our final song. Give thanks. <laughs> Give thanks. Just a reminder that, uh, particularly for those of MCF, but anyone in Sheffield really, that Unit 2, which was the room where we had Sparrow's Nest Cafe, uh, is open tomorrow morning at 8 a.m. and also on Monday mornings at 8 a.m. for an hour for, for prayer. And uh, you're welcome to join us. Just praying again for our, our nation and our world and particularly for our local community. Um, also, if you want some help with Advent, we have uh, some Advent reflections every day are being shown on the Medhead Christian Fellowship Facebook page called The Journey to Christmas. And they're available each day. Um, we've already done the first two. Uh, they're really good, though I say it myself. I can say that because I'm not doing them at the moment, although I'll be doing some a bit later on. They're available on the YouTube channel, the Facebook page, and really would encourage you to actually uh, check them out. They're about 10 minutes each day. Uh, this week, for those at uh, MCF, we're probably, weather permitting, going to resume our prayer works on the Batemore John Thorpe estate, starting at about 11.45 this week, because there's a communion service after our online service meeting on the shopping precinct. And Sunday evening prayer meeting will also start again in Unit 2, starting at 7 o'clock. So there's lots of ways that you can keep asking, keep seeking, and keep knocking in prayer. We're back here uh, on this channel, on this channel sounds great, doesn't it? It's not Channel 4 or the BBC, is it? But on this channel, we're back here next Wednesday night at 8 p.m. Um, we might have a bit more of a Christmas theme, who knows? But we'll still be praying for our needy world. And of course, 
our tree of thanksgiving and remembrance will be there with your names on it, hopefully, that we can actually pray for, and that will be part of our service next week. Shall we say the grace as we close? The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Bye. Thank you.